Honda's telephone fly. I don't know much about the history or the background to it, except that it seems to be a pattern by Alice Comba, who was a pro tire um, some time back. Um, and I'd met her a few times. Fantastic lady, brilliant fly tire. Um, or dresser, and then she might have said fly dresser back then. Um, and she was one of the, the few pro fly tires in Ireland when I started off um, tying flies and fishing. It's a lovely looking pattern. It has uh, some some sort of a fire orange, or I, I've used the temper fly fluorescent red because it's a ready orange for the butt there. Uh, golden pheasant crest. Um, it's it's a sort of a a light olive um seeds for tight body now hopefully you might be able to make this out in the in 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 the light here um i've used a a uv or fluorescent um seeds for dubbing which i think will add to it as it's quite a bright fly um it has a claret pammered hackle um a blue shoulder i think the original said blue quail um rather than blue jay or instead of blue jay um which i think shoulder hackle is the full shoulder hackle i think i prefer um a substitute than, than blue jay if it was a throat hackle i favor the blue jay um so i use the blue blue guinea fowl on this which again i think just a whole bright fly and it has a, a bronze mallard wing and um the head is finished in black thread so as I say, it's it's a really nice looking fly, and um, let's get to how to tie one of these. Okay, so I'm gonna take a size ten, um, fulling mill heavy wet, fluorescent red. It's a fire orange, is a sort of a ready orange, and this fluorescent red, as I said before, is a sort of an orangey red to my eye anyway. So I think it'd be pretty close. And just bring that down around the, the bend and then let's bring it back up to the tail position. Now to make that tread more robust, you can add some UV resin. I'm just gonna add some clear lacquer or also known as clear varnish to that and that should help keep it nice and um, strong. Uh, the tail of this fly is golden pheasant crest which is um, let's pick some up here show you one one of these okay not too much like that but I generally find um, you know what you can do is you can just wet it a tiny bit with your wet your fingers and just catch it in look and there you go uh, no steam needed and I usually go around the length of the, the shank so um, that's about it's about right so first time it's fair enough so just going to catch in some of this it's um it's oval gold or as it's called um, French gold as well so this is the Semper fly uh, French gold in medium just catching that in underneath there back as far as the tail and I'm just going to tuck it out away I don't like putting it in my spring here because I'd be afraid that you know French gold might get damaged so that's the reason I'm not doing that I get my wax wax my tread And I'm going to get some light, um, a lightish olive dubbing, um, which is UV as well. I'll show you, um, it's UV or fluorescent, or whatever you want to describe it. It'll react to the UV light. I'll show you when it's dubbed on here. But first, we better dub it on. So, let's dub some on, make a rope, and start to... Bring it up the body here. You can 
tighten it again where it needs to be. And I just want to get this up the length of the body, so I need a tiny bit more. Should be it. Just bring my tread up and down now just to create a base there. And I use a claret hackle. It's a little bit of a lighter claret than I use on my, say, Malarvin clarets. Um, it's this this color, uh, whereas on a slightly darker one that I use, uh, I'm not sure how much you pick it up on the light. This one is a bit lighter than that one, um, and it's the one I like for for contrasting with this olive here. So let's catch it in. Normally I have that stem trimmed short but I'm busy I wasn't concentrating on it so it'll be fine anyway okay my hackle pliers just move that dubbin out of the way and catch my hackle and I just want to hammer this down the body and just open the turns as I go open them a little bit wider as I go that's just a personal preference if you like that it's the way I like to tie them let's get my French medium gold here hang that hack of pliers up there out of my way bring this forward so I get about four turns of this I'd say so trap it in again if I can I'll trap it in underneath turns in front and behind and then snip it off and get my waist tackle here and snip that off it's a bit awkward but we'll get it there you go so I'm going to just very lightly give it a velcro brush here Don't want to be anywhere rough with this. Or I don't want to damage my my rib. Just stamp my fingers. Just pull everything back and have a look. Keep it fairly tidy. Um, just going to get my whip finish tool now, and I'm just going to give this two turns. Okay, one fibre there somewhere. It's misbehaving. So then I'm going to come in with my black thread, Semperfly Classic Waxed 6 old black. Then just going to carefully start running that down over the fluorescent thread. Let's bring it down to this tie in point here. Okay. Then just bear with me a second here while I locate a small blue guinea fowl feather. Like so. Like this. And I just peel the fluff off it there as I was picking it up. Force of habit, I suppose. And. I'm going to find a tip on this while I'm here as well. So that'll do, just to kind of, if you like, prepare it. We just need a turn or so of that. I think the original said blue quail as a substitute for um, blue jay, but to be honest, on this fly, I think, I don't think the blue jay would look as nice because it's a shoulder hackle. So I think there's, um, would be this would be good to use just as I say we might get a second turn on it here careful like so 
then let's catch that in underneath. Let's move my tread a bit. And I guess two turns in front. I'll just keep my tread out of the way with my finger there and just trim that off. Then I'm just going to moisten my fingers just to pull back all these fibers as many as I can. There's normally some hackle barb that will stick out in the way, especially when you're doing a video. It's um, sod slow, I think. Okay, let's trap that in. And the wing is bronze mattered, so I'll get a bit of bronze mattered here and just just try and roll it to form a bit of a wing. So, as I normally say for this, I normally try to pull this off, which is roughly three times the width of the wing that I want to form. <coughs> Hopefully it ends up something like that. And then just line that up. Um, I want it going back to the length of the tail. Then it's a pinch and loop straight down. And you go for another pinch and loop straight down. Say your prayers. If you're a beginner, hope that your wing sits nice. Like so. And then we can to trap it down a little bit more then get your scissors come in snip all that away and just hold your wing in place if you want and just nice and carefully take your time building up a nice small black head On your fly like so. Just put a tiny bit of wax on this. Make sure I have plenty of grip here. Let's give it one more turn, and then gonna get my whip finish tool. A bit of pressure on the thread there. I'll just give this a couple of turns of the whip finish, like so. Now. As I think, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know what's coming next. The lacquer. I like to put the lacquer on before I trim off. Let's just put a drop on top. And your scissors. Just snip off. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn it upside down. I'm going to get another little drop of lacquer. What you can do here if you want is tilt these. Up a little bit more let's just make sure that the lacquer runs away from the eye that's not bad like so and there's your um, canvas telephone fly